Hi, my name is Jill Dalowich. Hi, my name is Sagar Rabia. Hi, my name is Neil Mehta. Hi, my name is Richard Chi. And we are SOLAR, students organizing long-term atmospheric research. to discuss our novel alternative energy system with you to spread the word about possible cost-effective methods of alternative energy and hopefully create a more environmentally friendly community and improve air quality throughout the world. As you know, carbon dioxide and other toxic chemical emissions are a prominent problem around the world, especially in urban areas due to the high usage of fossil fuels as a source of electricity. These emissions contribute greatly to climate change, acid rain, the release of toxic heavy metals and other adverse effects, including increased risk for cancer. These problems are especially prominent here on Long Island as well, in, as well as in New York City. For this reason, we set out to improve emission rates in our community through extensive research as well as spreading the word. So in order to improve this widespread issue, studying alternative sources of energy seems to be the only practical solution. These renewable energy sources do not create the adverse effects of fossil fuels. However, in 2010, only 1% of the energy in the, US, in the U.S. was from an alternative source. So we thought we could explore the option of solar power to reduce the rates of chemical emissions from fossil fuels. Solar power is a much more feasible means to create energy as it is effective and produces local on-site energy which reduces the need for complex infrastructure yielding both economic as well as environmental savings. So current methods of solar power use silicon-based solar cells. Although effective, these solar cells are also extremely expensive to produce and implement. Even with government and private corporations subsidizing of solar technology, these costs remain unfeasible for everyday citizens to implement, use, and maintain. In fact, the cheapest solar cell on the market costs approximately 30 cents per kilowatt hour of energy. Um, so, so rather than focus on this conventional expensive solar cell, we decided to explore an alternative called the dye sensitized solar cell. And basically what this does is it uses natural organic dyes from everyday fruits including the blueberry and the blackberry to efficiently produce electricity. Compared to these conventional solar cells, the DSSC is generally cheaper, more flexible, and easier to produce. This allows the DSSC to be more versatile and have a range of applications from um, powering buildings and houses to powering small appliances. So unfortunately, like many other technologies, the desensitized solar cells has inherent problems. Perhaps one of the most inherent is the durability of the cell, or its ability to maintain a consistent power output over a period of time. Uh, now to see why this was so, we actually did several literature surveys and concluded that UV radiation from the sunlight was actually lowering the durability. Now how this occurred was that UV radiation was causing a heat increase in the cells. Now this heat increase would alter the inner mechanism of the solar cells, thus decreasing its durability. So in an attempt to fix this problem, we went to Farmville State Universities and developed solar cells with the mind of uh, having a UV barrier on top of it in an attempt to reflect these UV radiations. Uh, we use the semiconductor zinc oxide, commonly found in sunscreens, to develop a UV barrier. Fortunately, our efforts proved fruitful as we managed to increase the durability of the desensitized solar cells by over 20%, as shown in our graphs. This method also proved very cost effective, costing about 3.6 cents per kilowatt hours compared to the conventional silicon solar cell, which uh, costs about 30 cents per kilowatt hours. Unfortunately, um, this looks into future prospects of our um, desensitized solar cells, so that one day we might find them on top of our houses, complete, completely powering them. We hope to spread the word of our novel solar technology throughout our community by putting flyers and contacting Oyster Bay government, district superintendents, and our local public library. Through this, we hope to power our library and the Jericho School District via solar energy. Also, by funding the Solar Award at the Long Island Science and Engineering Fair, highlighting high school atmospheric research, we want to encourage creative thinking and a dr drive to preserve our precious resources for future generations. In addition, Jill Dalowich, member of Mother Nature Network, has been blogging about our developing research, the problem with fossil fuels, and how to lower one's carbon footprint. Through this, we hope that our actions create a much more eco-friendly community and improve air quality throughout Long Island and New York City and throughout the world as well. We hope that this will improve health conditions for people as well as restore a sustainable climate for wildlife. After all, good planets are hard to find.
If you need any additional information, please email solarjhs at gmail.com. Hi, my name is Michael Chen. We'd like to thank the following people for helping us. First, Farmingdale State University for allowing us to conduct research. Next, our alma mater, Jericho High School, and our, especially our research advisor, Mr. Rita McCalla. Next, the Calvin Dolowich, Bolak, and Gonzo Law Firm for the use of their facilities. Next, Mother Nature Network. And finally, our friends and family who helped us spread the word about these pressing issues.